Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about crossovers and the new direction Magic the Gathering has, and I will be very upfront with you. I do like it. Um, Hasbro has a lot of really interesting intellectual property, including Power Rangers, Transformers, Dragons and Dungeons, or Dungeons and Dragons, of course. Somebody will correct me on that one. And other ones, like I would be most excited for Beast Wars. Beast Wars was my favorite TV show when I was very, very young. Megatron as a T-Rex, I did have that toy, and Optimus as Gorilla. Uh, and Cheetor, I had all the Beast War toys. Like, I just, uh, that franchise, when I was in elementary school, I think either uh, fourth grade, I think fourth grade is when I had its own TV show as well, which I watched. And I had all the uh, very, very collectible ones um, that I no longer have today. Uh, I would, in a heartbeat, given my current income situation, I would buy every single collectible if I could. If they so like retro graded and they were like kind of similar i would buy them all and of course i would buy them all in form of a magic card which gets me to uh, what's happening here so my little pony has not been doing good the numbers are down the watch the people who are watching it are down the bronies which are male people my age who enjoy it are down um, I have never watched My Little Pony. I've only really enjoyed one character, uh, Rarity. And I saw some funny YouTube clips of her a few years ago. And she's kind of the bratty uh, character, the princess character, if you will. And I was like, yeah, that's a pretty cool character. And yeah, uh, you probably don't remember, but if you watch the oldest videos, we actually had a Rarity art design for the channel. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding at all. So the fact that I finally get a Rarity... Uh, magic card is really cool now one of the uh, the twilight magic card the twilight sparkles magic card actually references applejack and cutie pie uh, so cards that are not currently do not exist so for you to use twilight sparkles ultimate which is winning the game you need to get all her pony friends together which tells me that, yes, there are more pony friends coming. Otherwise, why would you have that line of text? Even something as dumb as a Steam steam Flogger boss, remember that? And no one knew what it was about. And then many, many years later, in Unstable, did we have finally have contraptions. And a lot of dumb MTG Finance people speculated for years on that card, thinking contraptions would be like a know in a standard set which would then make the card playable in modern right or something like that but no it was an unstable so a big middle finger to those people <laughs> who speculated on that actually i think that steam flogger boss took the place of um doesn't it take the place of your land which is like terrible right now that i'm thinking about it i have opened them in unstable the reprinted card I think it replaces your land, which sucks. I mean, that's just terrible, right? Because that's the only reason you bought Unstable was to get that land. But anyway, let me go on with um, my analysis of what's going to happen. So, who has the most money? What age group in a Magic Do young players have map money? No. Do people in college have money? Maybe, but probably not. Do recent people who just graduated college have money? Yeah, but they also have student loans. So who's likely to have money? How about a 32-year-old single male who owns his own business? And before you say, oh, your business. No, my business is very successful. You can look at it on LinkedIn. Uh, we make, just I'll put it this way. I don't make any less than I would make as a patent attorney. And you can Google how much a patent attorney makes. So back to my um, analysis. They know I have money, and I'm not into buying these standard packs or these collections. Like, it doesn't really make sense. One thing that, you know, people who have money, they have they understand expected value. They don't want to gamble on something. Like, the, the Masterpieces was a very bad gamble. It literally is a lottery ticket. Um, people like me want to play fantasy football because there's some sort of skill level, right? There's some type of, um, it's not just, Oh, well, maybe I should roll the dice, 
right? So I don't play dice. I, I play blackjack because you can, it's numbers, right? But you're still behind. Uh, the house always has a slight edge over you, but in black deck jack out of all the casino games, um, there is one casino game, but it's not very popular where it is closer to 50, 50 than blackjack. But I mean, that's a very high rolling casino game. Uh, yeah, you want to feel like you're buying something that has a set amount of cards in it with a set value. No surprises. And Upper Deck, um, all these sports cards, uh, understand this. Upper Deck came out with a $25,000 box, which had Tiger Woods Auto and Michael Jordan Auto and LeBron James Auto and all these really great autos. And they were all guaranteed. And then you could get variances. You could get parallels of each of these autos. But you, everyone got the same, I think it was like 100 autos. Yeah, I think it was 100 years of tops or something like that. Or up a deck, I, I don't remember. Um, and no one got anything different. I mean, maybe you got a different parallel. I remember Daisy uh, from, Daisy Riddle from Star Wars was in the, in the box. I don't really know why, but I do remember that. Recalling that uh, she was in, she, her auto was also in the box. That's what a high roller is going to want. They're going to want guaranteed value with a little bit of variance. And that's it. I don't even like variance. Um, I don't like opening booster packs. A lot of you asked. I mean, I'm sitting on thousands of booster packs now. And honestly, I could open them all because I don't intend to sell them. I'm sitting on boxes of new Phyrexia, Meriden Besieds, and so on and so forth. Innistrad. And... I just have no desire to... It's not that I care about the value. I don't care about the value. Yes, I will lose value, but that's fine because there's a lot of things I could be doing on a Friday, Saturday night where I would be losing... Like, this Saturday night, um, I'm hanging out with a friend, and that's... I mean, I know what this friend likes to do, so it's going to be way more money than opening two boxes of New Phyrexia for the night. So... How do they get my money? Well, very simple. Give me a free card set, make it for charity, even though it's net profit or for charity, net proceeds, right? I mean, depends on how you calculate that. There's some accounting wiggle room, as I can tell you. And give me these characters. I mean, there's a reason that they didn't give me all of them because when, once I buy four of these, they'll come out with a new one and I'll have to complete the collection because that's what I want to do. I'm not happy that there's only three of them for $50 or $100 if I want the playmat. I probably would just get three of the 50 and one of the 100 just to see the playmat. But I'm going to buy them. And when they come out with Beast Wars, I really hope they don't sell free cards for $50 because that would be very bad for me. I will buy that too. And they come out with Power Rangers, I will buy that as well. So... That's the high-end product I really want. I have no interest in the Collector's Deluxe Edition of that because it's not unique. There's not a guarantee of my value back. Here, there's a guarantee of the value because it's a collector's item. It's whatever a collector is going to sell it for, and a collector is not going to sell it for less than they bought it for. No, not and definitely not en masse, right? Hi, guys.